Hey everybody, Topher Welsh here for Inside the Hive at VideoHive.net, the blog for VideoHive.net and VisualFXTuts.com. We're going to be checking out different ways to get some motion blur in your After Effects compositions today uh, using either the built-in tools, the CC effects, or another effect technique that I learned actually just this week. So first off, let's look at the built-in motion blur for After Effects. What we have is uh, we have just this I love me some motion blur layer. It's a text layer with a nice rotation applied to it. And you can see it doesn't have any motion blur. So we want to add some motion blur. And a lot of people ask, like, okay, so I switched on my motion blur right here for the layer. Why isn't that working? See, we got motion blur, simulate shutter duration. Well, the reason that's not working right now is you actually have to have motion blur turned on for the entire composition. So that is one of the most common misconceptions that people just get so mad and so pissed off because they cannot figure it out and they get stuck and hung up. So if you're going to use this built-in motion blur, make sure it's turned on for the composition. That right there is number one. Let's turn this off. Let's turn on the next layer. I turn off motion blur for the composition. And we're going to look at CC Force Motion Blur. You can find CC Force Motion Blur at Effect Time. CC Force Motion Blur. Uh, I've already applied it, so we're going to look at our blur samples here. Uh, by default, I think it goes to 9. You can see what that looks like. The more blur samples, the longer it's going to take to render. Uh, the, the less, you know, it's easier going to be to render. So you can see, let's just uh, RAM preview this. You can see it's already taken a lot of time to just draw every single frame. And if you have um, HD compositions for this, it's going to eat up a lot of RAM, and it's going to eat up a lot of render time. So if you are looking to um, kind of do a fast motion blur sim, uh, I recommend just using the built-in capabilities of After Effects versus CC mo Force Motion Blur. But sometimes, sometimes, the built-in capabilities don't work. And in that case, you have to use CC Force Motion Blur. And even sometimes then... CC Force Motion Blur doesn't work on the layer when you actually apply it to it. So let's can see what it's looking like right there. So if it doesn't work when you apply it to the layer itself, so say let's take this off, you can either pre-compose by doing Control Shift C. You can either pre-compose the layer and then apply CC Force Motion Blur, or you can apply Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and then apply CC Force Motion Blur. So that is another way to get around it if um, if just applying CC Force Motion Blur to your layer just doesn't work. All right, now our next way to get some motion blur, this is more um, of a technique used for uh, large scale like 3D renders um, or bigger compositions or even footage sometimes. It kind of depends, but uh, Sometimes just this stuff just does not look right, and uh, I'm going to show you guys. This is John Dickinson's website over here, motionworks.com.au, and he did a tutorial on making some promo graphics for a Fast and the Furious when it went on uh, sale. So I'm going to let him take it away and show you right here. Um, what he does is he... All right, so there's my docucam, and... Here's my footage. Now you might have noticed that there was no motion blur on this. I didn't have time to use motion blur. It would have taken a long time to render. Uh, this was a very quick job. And I decided to put the motion blur on afterwards. And I did that in After Effects using the time warp effect. Just open up this comp. So there are third party plugins for adding motion blur, things like real smart bl motion blur from revision effects. But After Effects has a great feature, which is the time warp effect. If I just turn that on, and you can see it's quite slow, but look at that. It's actually added motion blur to the render, which is amazing. You apply time warp from the time menu, time warp. And you can see I had it turned off because it's very slow. But isn't that exciting that you can actually apply motion blur after you've rendered? Why would you bother doing that in um, Cinema 4D or your other 3D program when you can add it afterwards? Exactly. So as you see, what you can do is you can uh, 
take your 3D render. So we all know that you know rendering motion blur takes a lot of time and a lot of render time and a lot of CPU usage. And so if you can render out just straight renders like this and then apply time warp from uh, it's in effect time time warp right out of the box, just using that, it will um, give you some nice motion blur and you know make things a little bit easier for you and a little bit easier on your computer. So for a little bit more information on CC Force Motion Blur, we, you can check out Arn Rabinowitz's Creative Cow tutorial back in the day in like 2006 on uh, blurring with CC Force Motion Blur, and they got some information on uh, the Psychor FX HD. And, you know, that's about it. I mean, there's three easy ways for you guys to simulate Motion Blur without having to use up tons and tons of RAM, or, you know, if you are having some trouble with it, Here's three different ways that you can work around it. So that's it for me for today, you guys. My name is Topher Welsh from VideoHive.net and VisualFXTuts.com, and I will see you in the next quick tip tutorial. I'll see you guys later. Bye.